This is Plane Maker Tutorial 31 and Blender Part 17. What I want to do in this tutorial is go back and review stuff that we learned just to get a better handle on them and I'm going to explain some new stuff along the way. So first of all, I want to work on this panel now and there's some interesting instruments here that I want to cover. So I'll move it over to the layer one so that the export script can grab it. Now remember here on this one we had the aspect ratio issue. There are several different ways that you can deal with this. With this particular instrument, we chose to take a smaller instrument and try to take better advantage of the space there. For this other instrument, I chose a different method. I enlarged the background. Notice now the background is a little bit larger, the black stuff. And now we can map this instrument along and not have to distort the aspect ratio of it, but we still fit all these instruments on there. So the next thing I want to showcase is how we can go about making the side slip indicator. The side slip indicator is an instrument, but it's not mouse clickable. I cannot click on it and expect it to perform some function. So it's going to be a combination of what we learned for this retract lever and what we learned for these animated panels. Now we could go about doing this in two different ways. One way would be simply to map this tube across this texture here that has an animated function. And we should be able to get it to work like this. We would see an animation of a ball going back and forth on this. Now that would work well, except for if we look at it from an angle, it would start looking weird. You would see the ball like a sticker plastered to the circumference of this tube. So what I want to try instead is we want to try to animate this ball. But first you'll probably notice that we're going to run into an issue. And the issue is that we need to make this thing transparent. How do we go about making an object in Blender transparent so that X-Plane recognizes it? Well, let's take a look at our texture here. Remember I told you that this is normally transparent and it needs to remain transparent for the 2D cockpit? Well, not so with the 3D cockpit. So let's open this thing up in Photoshop. And because of all the copying and pasting I've done, and look at all these layers where I've pasted stuff in, we have obscured that transparent part of this texture. And in order for it to be transparent again, in my case, I have just a single layer that's obscuring this transparent area. And now I can make use of this area in order to map it across transparent things. So let me just go in and copy this little part here of this tube. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it and drag it to the transparent area here. And now I go to opacity and I turn it down to like, let's say 50. Okay, so here we got something that could pass for a glass texture. So let me export it and overwrite the existing panel. Then go back to Blender, reload this image, and now you see that things have changed. We can enable Alpha, and we should be able to see right through this thing, and we can tell that it's transparent. All right, so now we need to map this glass over this thing. So we tap into Edit Mode, hit U for Unwrap, map it across here. I'm actually going to straighten out the edges just a little bit, resize it to make it fit, and let's see how this looks in Textured Mode. Okay, well, we see a very untransparent tube there. How do we make it transparent? Okay, what I need to do here is tab into edit mode, and with one of these faces selected, and you can select it by hitting shift and then right-clicking on one of these faces, making sure you're in face select mode here, go to texture face tab, and then you click on alpha. And what this will do is it will make this particular face, the active face, transparent. It will match the transparency that it's finding in this texture and will allow for this object to be as transparent as this PNG file is in this particular location. So that's very nice, but I don't want to have to go through and click on every one of these faces and make those transparent. Luckily, there's a little button here that allows me to copy that feature, that transparency, over to all the active windows. If we look at it now, it is actually a transparent glass object here. And now I'm noticing I should probably make the ball white. So what I should do is select the ball. Sometimes you can only access it when you're in a wireframe view. And I can map it across, for example, this texture right here, a little bit of a metallic one. So let's see how that looks. Notice how you can't see the ball when it's selected. You can't see it through this glass, but if you select the glass, you can see the ball. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to attach a bone to this ball so that we can assign a data ref to the ball. What I want to have happen is I want this ball to be on a pivot and sort of pendle around or swing around inside this tube. One way to do it is to place your cursor up here and then say center cursor. So with the ball selected, I have now made the center of this ball snap to that cursor. The other way of doing it is to simply grab the whole ball and I'm going to constrain it to the z-axis 
That way I know exactly that it's going to be right lined up to where the ball is. Now I tab back into edit mode, and with all the vertices of the ball selected, I drag it back down into position, constraining it and snapping it. And now I'm back down here, and what happens when I rotate this now is the ball moves back and forth right within the constraints of the tube. Okay, so next thing I do is I snap that cursor to the selection, and I add an armature. And this bone here will be resized now, and I actually need to drag it out of the way of that ball, because when these bones are in pose mode, they are notoriously hard to select and deselect. Okay, so here we go. I'm tabbing out of edit mode. I'm entering pose mode, and if I select it, it turns blue, which is what I want. Now I select the ball, I shift select the bone, I go control P for parent, and I make it parent to the bone. So now I'm going to select something else in the scene, and then I'm going to select the bone again, and check that the bone is actually the parent of this ball. So far, so good. This looks very promising. Now I want to animate this ball 5 degrees to the left and 5 degrees to the right. So making sure I'm in frame 1, I can hit the left arrow key to make sure I'm in frame 1. I hit the R button, hit control, and rotate the bone over by 5 degrees. And then I press the I key and add a rotational keyframe. And now I can go to the next frame, either by pressing this arrow here or by using the right arrow key on the keyboard. And now I go 5 degrees to the other side, or 10 degrees from where we left off. Now we hit the I button again, add a rotation key, and now we have that ball animated across these two keyframes. So next we have to add a data ref to this ball. And we have to go to the scripts window for that. Then we select the script under object that's called X-Plane Animation. And then just to help you one more time to know where to go to get the answers for these data refs, simply click in Google here, say explain data refs, and Google should bring up this file right here or this web page. You have all the data refs, and you can find the one you're looking for simply by hitting Command F on the Mac or Control F on the PC and typing it into this field right here. So I'm looking for the slip indicator. So let's see what we have here. Oh, there's five matches. The description says slip indication in degrees of ball deflection from centered. So we would find that under sim, cockpit 2, gauges, indicators. All right. So the top directory of these data refs is always sim. Then we go to cockpit 2. Then we go to gauges. Then we go to indicators. And here we should find the slip indicator, slip degrees. There we go. Now, I would think that the 3D ball is roughly doing the same thing as the 2D ball is. So if the 2D ball is going 5 degrees to the left, then the 3D ball should probably also be going 5 degrees to the left. And I don't know yet which one is which, if it's 5 degrees positive or negative, how it's considering it. It's usually a matter of trial and error before you figure these things out. I have to be honest with you, I've tried this before already, so I do know that the first one is a positive one and the second one is a negative one. So let me enter that here, 5 and negative 5. And now I'm going to apply this, and we'll save this guy and export him. Now I'm going to load up my aircraft, and we enter into 3D view, and we have this side slip indicator working, and it's even transparent. But why the heck are we not seeing the ball in it? See, you can see the landing gear door through it, but for some strange reason, we cannot see the ball in here. But I suspect I know what the problem is, so let's go back to Blender. And I think what we need to do here is we need to assign this glass a draw order which means we need to tell X-Plane in which order we want X-Plane to draw it. In order to do that, we need to switch over to this particular mode, object mode, and we need to add this to a group, and this object will turn green. So now let's save this, export it again, and see if it works in X-Plane. Look at that, we have a transparent glass with a ball. You can see the ball in it now. So this is exactly what we wanted. The problem was the draw order. And we're going to talk more about that as time goes on. But now at least I showed you this trick of draw order. Now let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to throttle up, release the brakes. And now if we move the plane left and right, we see that ball moving inside the tube left and right. So we can go in and fine tune and refine the textures. See the ball is kind of grayish looking. We can assign it a bigger brightness in Blender. We can do a whole bunch of stuff to make it look better. But at least now we have this functional 3D instrument. So stick around for the next couple tutorials. We'll be doing more of this kind of stuff. I'm going to try to work out all the bugs and questions that people might have about this whole process. If you have any bugs or any questions or any problems accomplishing what we're seeing here, then please don't hesitate to uh, either write a comment on explain.org where I'm posting these videos or wherever it is that you're seeing these tutorials. 
So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you stick around for the next couple of tutorials in this series. Thanks.